Well, it turns out that if you actually translate all of this, there's a button for it, so let's do that. Um, th th these are all for candles. This is supposedly a one terabyte flash drive from a company called Dory, Dory Pal. And it should be pretty obvious from just the packaging alone that this is in fact a scam. This is not a one terabyte flash drive, yet so many people on sites like Amazon and Newegg, these are reputable e-retailers, have fallen for this scam. Consider this listing here, USB flash drive, two terabyte, uh, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that, large USB drive, this is like so vague, yet there are 100 or so reviews and more or less five stars across the board. They're selling this thing for $45, which gives the impression that it is a bit more premium than your average thumb drive. However, no one has independently verified, at least in the reviews, that this is in fact a two terabyte capacity drive. Same goes more or less for this one terabyte drive, although I paid quite a bit less than 45 bucks for mine, which should be another red flag, mind you, when SanDisk, Samsung, and others are selling their equivalent 128 gig or even 64 gig drives for around 15 to 20 bucks, and you're only paying 20 bucks for, what, a thousand gigabytes, uh, there, there should be some kind of alarm going off in your head that this might be too good to be true. And this is where the problem exists because your next thought after that alarm goes off in your head would be to check the reviews, right? If everyone else says this is a great drive for the price, then it must be a great drive for the price. Problem is, most people don't know how to properly test these drives, and the sneaky witchcraft that goes on behind the scenes with drives like these is why so many people have fallen for this scam. I'm gonna show you in this video though, what is actually happening and why these are a big fat lie. Stay with me. The Montex Sky One is a mid-tower primed for your next ATX PC build, featuring integrated ARGB with built-in controller and a mesh front panel design for optimal airflow with contact pins for wire-free removal. Fit up to a 360mm fan rad combo up front or up top and a 120mm at the rear for maximum cooling and enjoy a modern front IO with USB Type-C. Learn more by clicking the link below. But first, let's open this uh, pretty janky packaging here. See, it's it's really nothing special. It's a bit of bubble wrap inside and this tiny old drive that uh, definitely is not capable of a one terabyte capacity. And you can see right there on the housing, it says 1000 gigabytes. So this is not something that's like, you know, falsely being advertised in the title of the product page, etc. I mean, this is actually manufactured as a quote unquote one terabyte storage drive. It's uh, it's pretty ridiculous. Now in terms of build quality, and I feel really weird dedicating a segment of this video to discussing the build quality of a thumb drive, but here we go because some people might fall for this. It does feel somewhat premium, right? I kind of don't blame you there. Uh, it has a metal exterior, metal shell. It's on the lighter side, but uh, other than that, very minimal design. I like the way that it looks. It has a, a large ring here so that you can route it through your keys. Um, it, it's, I mean, it gives the impression of a somewhat decent thumb drive, but as you'll see here shortly, it is not only super slow, but it is also nowhere near uh, that one terabyte advertised capacity. So I've got to show you guys this because even I was fooled. I did not expect this. Um, I kind of feel silly for falling for it. I'm sure others have as well. But uh, I looked down at the reviews originally, right? When I filmed the previous uh, clip and noticed that a lot of these were in German, I figured it was no big deal. Maybe they were just selling in, you know, selling overseas for a while. And they just entered US markets with this, uh, this scam thumb drive. Well, it turns out that if you actually translate all of this, there's a button for it, so let's do that. Um, th th these are all for candles. They, they, they're selling, I mean, there's even a photo, if I had actually done any due diligence at all here, uh, you can see this one here is for a freaking candle. I think this is a candle. Most of these are for candles. And that is why this listing appears to be so reputable. They don't even have anything to do with the thumb drive, but they're making the thumb drive seem as though it's been praised by hundreds of people. That, my friends, is pretty freaking sneaky. And it's happening all over Amazon. So this is a similar listing, two terabyte USB 3.0 flash drive. Again, no maker model, like there, there's no brand necessarily behind this, that should be a red flag. Read speeds up to 100 megabytes per sec. That's a crock of crap. $50 price tag and 118 ratings, 4.4 out of five stars, not too bad. 
but let's read the reviews. Now, Amazon actually separates these reviews by country, so you'll have potentially multiple SKUs uh, for different countries, different regions. That could affect QC to an extent, and I think that's why Amazon does what it does, because you might have two different products that are the same on paper, but that are manufactured in different ways in different countries. Uh, but these are the top reviews from the United States. You can see that uh, pretty mixed bag here. So two people call these trash. You've got a few uh, five, four star reviews, one three star, uh, kind of jank, right? I wouldn't want to buy a drive with this kind of review set. But we go to reviews from other countries, right? It says it up top, top reviews from other countries. These are pretty much all five star. I mean, people seem to love this product more or less. This person here was uh, unsatisfied. But, uh, you know, the, the top four being five stars, that's pretty decent, right? Except we click on translate review here and we notice that uh, this person apparently is reviewing what looks like an SD card, not a thumb drive. I don't know of any LG G4 in existence that connects natively to a thumb drive or, you know, a USB type A port. Um, so this is... Um, this is again deceiving. What they are doing uh, are pulling in these reviews for products that have nothing to do with the product that us in the United States, the, the product that we see here on our Amazon.com page. Uh, and that is inflating these reviews uh, to make these products seem like they are much better than they actually are to the general public. But enough of that, let's go ahead and connect this drive here. I really hope that it uh, doesn't crash my system. Uh, let's see, what pulls up here? I'll switch to the desktop so you can see what I'm seeing. Here we go, slide it over to the right a bit. Okay, so uh, it seems pretty good, right? Um, you know, empty drive. Now, if we go back to, let's click on this PC. Okay, so it says here that the drive is a one terabyte drive, 976 gigs, more or less one terabyte, free of 976 gigs. Well, that's freaking huge. And that's usually where people stop. They plug in the drive, they see, oh, that, you know, almost a terabyte of free space. That's what I paid for. Awesome, five-star feedback. That's all people need to know, right? There's a lot more to this story. So we're gonna test both the speed of this drive and the capacity of this drive. We're gonna kill two birds with one stone with this folder right here. So this folder should transfer into this drive, no problem, right? It just might be slower than we'd like. So let's go ahead and test that. Now let's go ahead and just drag the folder all the way in and just let it do its thing. 2,000 years later. Yeah, I changed my mind. I don't think I'm gonna wait this long for the drive to transfer these files. Uh, this, is, this is a snail's pace by comparison. And this was advertised, mind you, as a USB 3.0 drive. These are not USB 3.0 speeds. We haven't even come close to that. It's not like we're thermal throttling or anything of the sort either. Um, so yeah, the two hour and 25 minute time span, not gonna wait for that. In fact, I'll go ahead and tell you what's gonna happen. Once the true capacity of this drive is maxed out, which is probably in the realm of one or two gigs, more than likely, the drive will continue overwriting previous files on the drive until all of the files have been quote unquote transferred. It gives the impression that all the files have been transferred into the drive, but if you actually clicked into the drive, you'd see that only a small fraction of those files are actually there. And I'll go ahead and show you what I mean with a smaller file set. So we'll cancel this. We'll go ahead and delete what's in here. And we'll transfer a few files that I know will probably fit. So this one is a 332 megabyte file. We'll go ahead and transfer this one. We'll transfer this one. This is a 268 megabyte file. And uh, we'll keep transferring until we reach the point where we can't play back certain files on the drive because they've been corrupted and partially overwritten, which is again what these drives will do. So let's transfer a cluster of these in. Jesus, could you imagine going back to USB 2.0 speeds like permanently? All right, so we finally finished transferring enough footage to show you what is actually going on here. So uh, this is the drive. Again, this is the uh, supposed one terabyte drive. And you can see there are a few clips in here that don't have little thumbnails, little uh, previews. And these three are corrupted. And the reason why they're corrupted is because this drive wrote over some of the video data uh, to make room for other clips. So now I'm gonna drag another 340 megabyte file into this drive. And we're gonna see if it corrupts any of these other clips. I expect that it will about 20 megabytes per second transfer speeds now. I mean, it's not terrible, but that's not the biggest issue I have with this drive, obviously. So this one is also not play. <laughs> so this one's corrupt as well. Um, that's, that's super strange. In fact, I, I imagine a lot of these probably are. So even if we can see the thumbnails in some of them, um, they might not all play, which, yeah. 
these aren't playing either. Now I just transferred another one to make sure this isn't a fluke and same, yep, same issue. So it doesn't really matter. Now what's interesting is that it's still trying to read this. Now I just transferred this, this file here is about uh, what, half a gig. I believe it's, uh, it says it right underneath there. So a uh, 468 megabyte video clip and the supposed total, you know, uh, used space on this drive went up to 38.5 gigs from 38. So the drive is still signaling to Windows that it's being filled up by this extra space, but it's not actually doing that because when we go back to play this video, you can see that it, it's corrupted to the point where it will not play at all. What's funny is that none of these that I imported after the fact actually work. So I was assuming that because they showed the thumbnail previews uh, that these were all uh, valid and viable, but they are not. <laughs> I'm wondering where things stopped. I think it stopped here. I think this is the last viable clip. And then after that, you've got this break where these three won't even look. I can't even import these into a hex editor. Um, they're that corrupt. And then here, I think is where things start to work out. Yeah, which is interesting. So what I'm gonna do is cut back. I'm gonna shave back these. I know these don't work. And then I'm also gonna shave these off that obviously don't work. And let's see what that size is. 24 and a half gigs. And apparently we have 951 gigs remaining. Of course, we know that's not true by this point. So regardless of the clip that I import after this, it will likely be corrupt. And if that clip doesn't become corrupted, then one of the previous clips that you loaded onto the drive uh, would become corrupt. And that is obviously a big issue if you're expecting to be able to load tons of data onto these drives. Maybe you think that you have, and then you go to a very important meeting or something, and all of a sudden you can't access any of your files because none of them were ever there permanently to begin with. <laughs> I think I broke the drive. So I cleared out all the video files. I was trying to bring in new files and, and find the limit to find the true capacity of this thing. But uh, I've cleared out all of the clips except for one. Uh, and it will not open now. Actually, it used to open until I deleted it and tried to pull it back in, and now it just keeps saying that the file type is unsupported, which we know is not true because it's using the same player that I would normally use in the, the real folder on my desktop, which is, you know, all these files are in my uh, NVMe drive. So all these clips work, right? It's just when they try to read them from the drive, things get pretty screwed up. So if this doesn't prove that the sham drive is in fact a sham, I went through the uh, hassle of renaming it the sham drive. I think that that fits accordingly. I don't know what will. This is clearly a scam. People are falling for it left and right. And actually it's pretty clever how they're getting around just blatantly exposing the fact that this is not anywhere near a one terabyte capacity drive. Uh, it's, it's easy to just plug it in, see what Windows you know, is being told to show you from the drive and call it a day, confirm that it's a one or two terabyte drive, but it is, it's so far from that. In fact, I'm willing to bet that it's less than 32 gigs just based on what I've seen here. And when you factor in the price, I actually pay for this thing, you're, you're being ripped off because a 32 gig drive or somewhere in that ballpark costs less than what I paid for this. I think this is like 20 or 30 bucks for this drive. The listing was taken down. I'm glad that it was, so no longer uh, people can fall for that one. But there are many others, like I showed you on Amazon, and they're using sneaky ways to get around it. So be diligent. You don't want to overpay. Even if you're okay with whatever amount of storage you're getting on this drive, you can find cheaper ones from reputable brands that will actually tell you when you can no longer write files to it. They won't just override previous files that could be very sensitive. You don't wanna lose those in the long term. I've rarely bought the things that I knew were obvious scams just because I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. If you're gonna buy a card that you think is worth, you know, 500 bucks, but it shows up and it's only a GT710 worth maybe 50 bucks, I don't know, in today's market, you know what I mean? Um, there was nothing really surprising there. You had to have seen that coming, but in this case, you could, you could easily be fooled. I, I'm willing to say that. I, I understand why so many people are giving things like this five-star, four-star reviews. Um, and and that, that's, of course, setting aside the fact that some of these retailers are using reviews for items that do not match these descriptions. Uh, but, it, you know, unless you actually run the tests, unless you actually 
notice the drive speed, the write and read speed disparities, uh, or notice that there is a capacity issue of <laughs> one that you'll run into very quickly with larger files, um, you could be fooled. And that's why I wanted to make this video and buy this drive to show you what you'd run into if you decided to fall for it. So hopefully this video cleared up any concerns you might have had regarding these seemingly great deals, right? I mean, that's an, that's an insane price per gig, if you really think about it, especially in this form factor here. I mean, flash storage, what, two terabytes for 40 bucks? Like, that's like dreamland alien tech. But uh, it is what it is. It is, it's crap. Uh, you should not buy it. You shouldn't fall for any of these. Don't buy anything. Personally, I wouldn't buy anything from uh, any company that I wasn't very familiar with. So uh, I would buy from Samsung, I would buy from SanDisk, uh, even um, you know, PNY, Crucial, whoever, Team Group even. Um, they all make great stuff. I've used all their stuff before. I've had issues with a, a few drives here and there, but for the most part, um, good experiences. And you're gonna get right the, <laughs> the capacity that is advertised uh, and you, you don't have to run into issues where your files will be overridden once you hit that maximum whatever it is again in this case i think it's somewhere around 20 25 gigs that is nowhere near close to what they advertise and they're getting away with it and the listings that are taken down are replaced by other listings that are backed up by sham reviews for products that aren't linked to the descriptions and, and it's 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 an ongoing feud but hopefully this video and others out there uh, will clear up those discrepancies keep you from losing 20 30 40 bucks on these garbage USB drives. If you like this one, give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. Consider leaving a comment down below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for being scammed with me.